<laughs> Sorry about the ding dong. Um, okay, so I think we're ready to get started. We're very excited to have you join us today for today's webinar. Uh, today's presenter is Stephanie Weiss. Stephanie is a senior solutions architect at Mindset with more than 20 years of SAP experiencing, experience managing and implementing integrated supply chain and logistics solutions. She's a self-proclaimed warehouse management and EWM geek. She's also an active blogger and speaker about EWM supply, uh, supply chain and warehousing. And she regularly speaks at SAP ASUG events. She's put together a very detailed presentation to share with you today. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, everybody. Um, let me just get started. Good morning, um, and thank you for joining our webinar. Um, like Amy mentioned, my name is Stephanie Weiss, and I'm a solution architect with Mindset. Today, I'll be walking you through um, the various WM offerings in S4 HANA. Um, so today's agenda, we'll start with a quick introduction to Mindset and myself, um, and then we'll dive into a brief history and evolution of SAP WM. Then we'll dive further into the actual offerings and their key differences within S4. Um, we'll also discuss migration options from ECC to S4, and then um, what are the key questions and considerations you need to ask on, on when deciding on a deployment strategy. We'll end the session today discussing mobility and, um, and lastly, how mindset can potentially help you on your journey to S4. So at Mindset, our mission is pretty simple. Um, we are committed to making the technology experience significantly better um, at work for everyone. Um, our tagline is we make SAP beautiful and easy to use. At Mindset, we have four main practices. The first being staffing. Um, we are an SAP shop and focus exclusively on connecting SAP rock stars with our clients. Our second practice is um, the solutions team, which again is SAP centric and focuses on um, custom development, implementation services, digital strategy and managed services. Our third practice is software. And then our fourth practice is our SAP certified app house, which is located in Minneapolis in our Minneapolis office, um, which we use to host design thinking sessions to help um, to help foster and build um, really creative and innovative SAP solutions. A little bit about myself. Um, I started um, working with SAP in 1998, um, right after college. I am certified in MM and WM. Like Amy said, I am a self-proclaimed warehouse geek. I love all things warehouse. Um, interesting fact, I'm originally from Alaska and I love to fish. Um, I'm a huge yogi um, and my greatest passions in life is our um, salmon fishing on the Russian River in Alaska and traveling the world. So we're going to dive into, um, we're going to quickly go over just the history and evolution of, of um, the SAP warehouse management over the uh, past 17 years. So standard WM was initially introduced in 1992 and has been widely adopted with over 7,000 customers worldwide. In um, 2002, SAP partnered with um, Cat Logistics and the Ford Corporation to develop a new warehouse solution specifically to specific for the service part management industry. This joint initiative eventually evolved into what we know today as EWM, and it was released to the general public in around 2005. Um, and at the time, it was only offered as a decentralized option. Um, so that they wouldn't impact the 7,000 plus customers that were already using um, standard WM. Over the course of the last, the past 17 years, um, EWM has really evolve, evolved into a, a best of breed WMS system that can compete with the more traditional solutions like Manhattan and Red Prairie. Out of the box, EWM incorporates the core um, ECC standard WM functionality 
um, plus a lot more advanced and robust features that can support higher volumes, um, more complex business processes such as slotting and rearrangement, kitting and value-added services. EWM off also offers tighter integration to um, other SAP modules like TRM, which is task, task and resource management, QM, yard management, and, um, and it has a lot more capability to um, connect to um, external automation systems like um, material flow systems and PLCs. With the release of um, S4HANA 1610 in 2016, EWM for the first time was offered as an embedded application component. Um, this eliminates the need to replicate business partners, master data, or transactional documents through, um, through SIF, which ultimately simplifies the IT um, landscape. Initially, SAP announced um, that ECC WM, so standard WM, would be available um, on S4 HANA on-prem only, but ultimately would be phased out and no longer supported after 2025. And then, and they also, in, in conjunction with that, they recommended that customers migrate um, to embedded EWM. However, SAP received a lot of pushback from their existing install-based customers, um, especially those customers that have really low complexity and base wa basic warehouse processes who, who they thought or who saw EWM um, as a significant barrier to basically migrating and adopting S4. So the EWM, you know, EWM functional functionality was a little bit of an overkill. So as a result, in June of 2019, so last summer, SAP announced a new offering called Stockroom Management. Um, so Stockroom Management will be included in the S4 HANA 1909 Enterprise Management License. And we'll get a little bit more um, into what is stockroom management. Um, so now we're going to go through a quick overview of kind of the, all the different um, WMS offerings with um, in S4. Um, but before we do, um, we have a quick poll we kind of want to um, do right now. So Amy, could you kick off that poll? So if you guys will just take a few, um, a minute or two to kind of fill out, um, fill out that poll. Okay, it looks like most people um, have answered. So we'll go ahead and end the polling. So it looks like that um, most of us, most of you who have joined our webinar are currently running um, ECC WM. We've got a few people that are utilizing decentralized EWM within, the East, within ECC. It looks like we have a couple of people that um, have done a migration to S4 and just a couple of people that are actually using um, embedded EWM in S4. Thank you everybody for uh, doing that poll. So in S4, um, there are many different WMS options that, prov that provide you ultimately with the ability and the flexibility to have different deployment strategies for different warehouses within your organization at the same time. As you can see in this plant structure, each storage location has a different WMS um, strategy. So <clears throat> I can have a plant with multiple storage locations and storage location one here is gonna be only IM managed. Let's say it's, you know, it's, it's bulk inventory, it could be potentially some silos, um, a raw, raw inventory um, area that doesn't need to be managed at the bin level. Storage location two um, is, has standard uh, WM. Um, and note that this is, um, there are plans to phase this out in 2025. Although there is, I've heard a rumor that they've extended that to 2027, um, but still officially, I think the, the word on the street, it's 2025. 
Storage location three here is, um, has stockroom management, which again will be available in S4 HANA 1909. Storage location four um, has basic embedded EWM. Storage location five has advanced embedded EWM. Storage location six um, is tied to a decentralized EWM system that is currently sitting on a separate NetWeaver SEM box. Um, SAP also plans to phase this option out in 2025. Um, and then lastly, storage location seven is, has a decentralized EWM on an S4 HANA database. And this actually became available in May of 2019 with the release of EWM 9.5. The key takeaway here is that really depending on your current and future business requirements and your processes, your landscape and infrastructure, your future growth and expansion plans, um, it's possible to have some warehouses utilizing stockroom management, others basic or advanced embedded EWM, and then others on a decentralized EWM server. So ultimately this gives you the flexibility to, to choose an appropriate deployment option for your business needs. So what is stockroom management? So stockroom management is essentially what we know today as ECC WM, but without the integration components to TRM, um, yard management, it does not have value added services or wave management capabilities. Um, like I mentioned before, stockroom management is included or will be included in the S4 HANA 1909 enterprise management license. And it's really, um, meant to be used um, or it's ideal for really low complexity basic warehouses that wouldn't really benefit from the, ad the advanced functionality of EWM. One key benefit of SRM is that it does help accelerate and reduce the risk of deploying S4 HANA. So um, stockroom management allows you to migrate your existing warehouse structure um, to S4 without having to make um, any changes. So you can basically migrate your existing or your current warehouse structure intact and then continue to use um, basic WM functionality beyond the 2025 um, deadline. Um, and then allowing you ultimately to have more time to plan and control your eventual EWM adoption if that's the correct solution for you. One thing to note, EWM still remains um, SAP's strategic warehouse management solution. So all new warehouse related enhancements or functionality will occur within EWM and not stockroom management. So embedded EWM um, has two versions that you can, you can choose from, basic and advanced, um, which we'll cover a little bit more in detail on the next slide. Some key benefits of um, an embedded environment first, it drastically simplifies, um, excuse me, simplifies the IT landscape and reduces the total cost of ownership since, it now, since it's now part of the core and does not require a separate server like decentralized EWM does. Also with embedded EWM, you have um, better and tighter integration with other SAP modules and S4 components. And there's a huge, um, a huge reduction in data duplication. I think one of the biggest advantages of embedded EWM is that basic EWM is included in the S4 enterprise management license. Um, however, advanced EWM does require additional licensing costs and, um, similar to decentralized, but the advanced licensing, licensing costs are applied at the warehouse level. So if you've got 10 warehouses in your organization and four, um, six of them are gonna use um, basic uh, EWM or even stockroom management, and you've got four that are going to be using advanced uh, EWM, you would only, your licensing costs would only be for those four warehouses that are using advanced EWM. So embedded EWM essentially has two flavors. You have basic and advanced. Um, basic EWM has, um, it definitely has some additional and enhanced functionality over um, standard WM. 
for example, it does, you can utilize um, the layout and process oriented storage control. Um, it has some advanced reporting capabilities. Um, it does um, integrate to resource management um, and it definitely offers some better analytics. Um, advanced EWM offers significantly more functionality um, such as wave management, value added services, kidding. Um, it, so in EWM, it supports both MTO and MTS, so make to stock and make to order. Um, EWM, advanced EWM also has slotting and um, rearrangement functionality. And like I mentioned before, if you use basic EWM, there's no additional licensing costs, but advanced EWM, um, there is, um, does require additional licensing costs, but you pay on a warehouse basis. Earlier, I mentioned that one of the key benefits of embedded EWM is the reduction of data duplication. So prior to um, embedded EWM, all master data or a lot of master data, configuration, some configuration, um, transaction data and predecessor documents like the expected goods receipt had to be replicated or transferred from ECC to WM. With regards to master data, um, material masters, customers, vendors, batch masters, were created initially in ECC and then replicated to EWM through the core interface, which is also known as SIF. Um, with embedded EWM, that is no longer required because they are shared records. So you no longer have to um, do a, du a dual, uh, dual maintenance in two different systems. Um, also with embedded EWM, you no longer have to duplicate configuration. So you can configure and define HU types, packaging material types, shipping conditions, et cetera, once and be done. I think one of the biggest benefits or the, one of the biggest things that I like about an embedded EWM system is um, the elimination of ODRs and IDNs, which um, stands for outbound delivery requests and out uh, inbound delivery notifications. So prior to embedded EWM, anytime an inbound or outbound delivery was created in ECC, it had to be replicated um, to EWM. And when it was replicated, ultimately in EWM, an IDN or an ODR were created. These then were converted to an in EWM inbound delivery or an ED or EWM outbound delivery. So essentially, you had two separate documents for every ERP document and none of the document numbers matched. And it, it, I found it incredibly confusing. Um, with embedded EWM, when an outbound delivery is created in S4, it's autom it automatically creates um, an EWM outbound delivery. So you no longer have this um, secondary document, the ODR or the IDN. Um, the one thing to note, and I'm super excited about this functionality, is that with the release of 1909, um, the S4 HANA outbound delivery number will be the same as the in EWM outbound delivery number. So, um, so you'll have the same document number both in uh, S4 and EWM. And this is true also for inbound deliveries. Um, in decentralized EWM, an expected goods receipt is required um, to receive against a purchase order or a production order. Um, in embedded EWM, you can actually receive directly with reference to a PO or production order. So the EGR is no longer required. And lastly, um, with embedded EWM, um, from a QM perspective, you no longer need the QIE inspection document. You can actually um, trigger follow-on functions directly from ED EWM against the S4 inspection lot. So decentralized EWM um, will continue to be a viable deployment option in S4 HANA. Um, a couple of reasons you might lean towards a decentralized environment versus an embedded environment is one, if you need 24 by, 24 by seven capability, even when you're the ERP, so the S4 system is down. 
Um, another consideration um, that's favorable to uh, decentralized EWM is if you need the ability to connect to multiple ERB, ERP systems. So if you need your EWM system to connect to multiple ERP systems that aren't necessarily um, SAP or S4. And then lastly, um, if you needed the ability to upgrade your ERP, so S4 and your EWM system separately, um, you can do that in a decentralized environment. So classic decentralized EWM um, is traditionally deployed on an S SAP NetWeaver or a separate SEM server um, with any database and it's connected to S4 HANA um, using remote function calls and SIF, which is the core interface. Um, in May of 2019, SAP released EWM 9.5, which is built actually, which is built on an S4 HANA um, platform and a HANA database. So with um, EWM 9.5, you no longer need SIF, so you no longer need the core interface. Um, and instead, the materials, um, batch records, um, and most of the master data is actually transferred between S4 HANA and decentralized EWM through the standard ALE IDOC interface. Um, one thing to note though, that, this, that the um, queued RFC um, will still continue to be used um, for bi-directional transfer of transaction objects. So all of the inbound deliveries and outbound deliveries and so forth, those will still be um, transferred between the two systems using um, the QRFC. Um, one thing to note, is um, decentralized EWM provides essentially the same functionality as advanced embedded EWM, but with a few minor exceptions. Um, for example, um, I mentioned that, the, that in 1909, the outbound delivery numbers will be the same in both S4 and EWM. Unfortunately, the reuse of ERP delivery numbers is not available with decentralized EWM. Um, the synchronized stock postings with IM functionality is also not available. Um, and then some of the new and um, enhanced Fiori apps are not available with decentralized EWM. Um, so this slide highlights some of the key differences between embedded and decentralized EWM. The key takeaway here is with embedded EWM, there's no transfer or duplication of master data and the inbound outbound deliveries are created directly in embedded EWM. Um, also, classic decentral EWM does require SIF, while EWM 9.5 will use the ALE IDOC interface to transfer master data and documents between systems. Um, but both, um, both options will continue to use the RFC um, to replicate deliveries. And unfortunately, with decentralized EWM, you still have the IDNs and ODRs, the inbound delivery notifications and um, outbound delivery requests. So now that we've kind of walked through at a high level the different WMS offerings and S4 HANA, I'd like to take a little bit, um, take a little bit more, talk a little bit more about um, some of the key differences um, and some of my favorite EWM functionality. So this slide compares at a really high level the differences between stockroom management, embedded EWM, and decentralized EWM by key warehouse processes and functionality indicated by the number of check marks. So for example, stockroom management provides, it only has um, one check mark. So it indicates that it provides very basic inbound and outbound process um, functionality, while advanced EWM and decentralized EWM provide the most robust and advanced functionality since it has three check marks. Um, as you can see with the absence of check marks, SRM does not support value added services, kidding or wave management. Those functionality, um, functionalities are only available in advanced and decentralized EWM environments. So in this slide, um, we dive a little bit deeper and highlight some of the key differences um, and provide a little bit more context. Um, for time's sake during this webinar, I won't go into detail for each warehouse process area um, but in Appendix A of this presentation, I've included slides um, very similar to this one for warehouse structure, stock management, um, inbound processing, outbound processing, uh, internal warehouse processes, and reporting and analytics that dive um, 
that dive uh, deeper and highlight the functional differences. Um, so after this webinar, if you would like a copy of this presentation to kind of view those additional slides, please feel free, please reach out to myself or Amy or really anyone at Mindset and we can definitely provide you a copy. Um, so, so what I'd like to focus on now is um, my top five EWM picks. Um, the first um, is activity areas and bin sequencing. So an activity area in EWM is basically a logical grouping of storage bins. So you can group several um, warehouse rows, so rows or aisles within a warehouse together, or you can even subdivide rows or levels um, for like the first two rows is one group and then, and then the third, fourth, and fifth bays are um, levels are another group or another activity area. So essentially what this allows you to do, to, to, you can slice and dice your warehouse um, and then through kind of a combination of activity areas and warehouse activities and bin sequencing functionality, um, you can support in EWM um, multiple different types of pick packs. So um, you can do U picking, Z picking, S picking um, in EWM, which I think is really great, fabulous functionality. My second top pick would be kidding. So in EWM, um, EWM fully supports three essentially basic kitting processes, um, MTO, MTS, and reverse kitting. So MTS, which is make to stock, um, products are built, excuse me, I had to <clears throat> cough. Um, products are built based on forecast requirements. So kits are basically pre-built to be stocked in the warehouse as individual SKUs for future um, sales order fulfillment. So MTS is fully integrated um, with production. Make to order um, or MTO products are built dynamically based on customer sales orders. Um, but the customer sales, but the MTO order is not created um, if there's available stock in the warehouse. So if you had, a, um, if you have these kits already sitting in the warehouse because you had an MTS order or somebody return, a customer returned them, um, SAP EWM is smart enough to know that I've got an order for, I've got a customer order for 10, but I've got five sitting in the warehouse. So I'm only gonna create an MT order for five. Um, one of the nice features with MTO is that once the product is completed, it does not require put away into the warehouse. So you can actually stage um, MT order, MTO products directly from your kitting area directly to the shipping dock. So no put away is required at all. Reverse kitting um, allows you to um, disassemble MTO and MTS products back into its original components then um, and then be able to put back those original components back into the warehouse. So you can break down um, your MTO, MTS products. My fourth top pick um, would be warehouse creation rules. So basically warehouse creation rules um, can be used to so slice and dice your workload to best support your different picking processes within the warehouse in order to maximize your picking and packing efficiencies, um, your equipment and resource utilizations. Um, so warehouse rules, you, you, there's so many different ways you can, um, can use them, but you can basically use them to kind of group multiple single line orders together. So if you've got a lot of one line orders, you know, sometimes you wanna say, I wanna pick 10 of those at one time so I can get them quickly to my small package line and get those, get those orders out the door because those are the fastest picks. Um, another thing you can use warehouse order rules to do is create groups of um, small orders. So if you've got a bunch of orders that have anywhere between two to nine or 10 line items, you can group those together um, and, and quickly pick the, and use the additional, my fifth pick, which is pick to cart. You can use the pick to cart functionality to pick multiple orders at the same time. Small orders that don't necessarily, um, that you can pick from a forward picking area and that doesn't necessarily require additional um, equipment to pick. You can also use warehouse order, uh, warehouse order creation rules to segregate out export orders or even freight orders. So you can say, you know, I have freight orders between 150 to 200 pounds that need to be processed in this staging area because it requires different um, pallet sizes. 
um, freight orders greater than 250, I'm going to stage over here because it requires different equipment to lift the pallets to put them on the truck. So there's a lot of flexibility um, that you can use warehouse order creation rules to really kind of best fit um, how product is picked, packed, and shipped within your warehouse. Um, lastly, I did mention briefly before um, pick to cart functionality. And what this allows you to do, well, first, it's only a Fiori app. Um, it's, only, it's only available as a Fiori app, so it's not part of um, standard core. Um, but what the pick to cart application allows you to do is it allows you to take, it allows you to pick multiple outbound deliveries at the same time while only making one pass through the warehouse. So you could have a, a cart that has 10 buckets or 10 bins on it, and SAP is going to tell you, is going to weave you through the warehouse based on your, um, your path until you pick this product, and that might be for order number three. Okay, the next item, go pick this, um, and that might be for order, order number five. So SAP will tell you what to pick in a sequential order, and then also tell you what order that goes to. So instead of having to pick one person, pick one delivery at a time, you can efficiently walk through the warehouse once, picking multiple orders at the same time. So now that you understand a bit more about um, your options in S4, um, the question now is, how do I go from ECC to S4? What are my migration options or strategies? So there's a couple of different scenarios. Um, so you can go from, if you're using standard WM in ECC, um, you, you can kind of go one of two ways. You can migrate. So SAP offers a compatibility a compatibility pack that you can use to move your existing WM structure from ECC into S4. From there, you then have the ability to migrate your WM system, your standard WM in S4, to um, stock room management or migrate it to um, EWM what, or embedded EWM, whether that's basic or advanced. Currently, right now, um, to go from standard WM to stockroom management and S4, um, there is no migration path announced thus far, at least that I don't know of. So that's something that will, I'm sure will come out in the near future. Um, to go from standard WM in S4 to embedded EWM, SAP does provide a migration tool within EWM to migrate existing um, objects. And I'll, we'll, we'll talk through that in the next slide. Another option is, is that if you um, are using standard WM or using decentral EWM, you can um, migrate your decentral EWM system to, from ECC to S4, utilizing the same migration tools as, um, as in the 2A, 2B flow. Like I mentioned um, in the previous slide, SAP provides a migration tool within EWM to migrate certain data objects from WM to EWM. So it doesn't migrate everything, um, but using this migration tool, you can migrate essentially your entire warehouse structure. So your warehouse number, your storage types, your sections, your storage bins, your storage types, all can be um, easily migrated from ECC to um, to EWM. You also can migrate master data um, and any HU related data like HU types and packaging material types. Also, uh, WM movement types and um, placement strategies, whether they're um, placement strategies or removal strategies, can also be migrated with this tool. So this migration is considered a quote unquote technical migration. Um, and so afterwards, you still have to go through, quote unquote, an implementation process to turn on EWM specific functionality. So that process typically involves, you know, your standard blueprinting phase, your realization, testing, and, um, and go live. So once you've migrated, or if you're starting a um, Greenfield SAP implementation, um, SAP does have best practices for EWM to help your implementation process. Um, the EWM best practices include uh, pre-configured processes, and they're listed kind of here. Um, it does include sample structures, 
um, and some automated workflows that you can deploy and use um, out of the box. However, I will caution, and, and in my experience, um, especially in EWM, because warehouses can be vastly different within an organization and, um, and be vastly different from one organization to another, um, these best practices are very, very basic um, and not necessarily, they don't necessarily fit a lot of business, a lot of um, past customers' business processes. So you still require some significant configuration and testing and, and so forth. So um, I want to caution on these best practices. If you, if you activate them and turn them on, um, you're not going to be running a full EWM warehouse. So um, before we get into mobility and we talk about um, kind of uh, ITS mobile and Fury and so forth, I'd like to do a second poll. So Amy, if you could kick off that poll, that would be great. So we'll give everybody a few, a few seconds to um, answer these, this question. Okay, it looks like we've got a we've got some good answers. I'll give it a few more seconds. Looks like a couple people are still answering. Okay. So the polling question was how would you rate your company's mobile mobile maturity? Um, and I think this is kind of what we expected and is pretty typical. Um, so we've got 36 percent still learning to crawl. 40% barely walking, and we've got a couple of a couple of people that are, you know, really are are pretty far along in their um, mobility maturity process. So that's great to see. Um, so for day-to-day -day operations in the warehouse that kind of require high speed, high volume scanning, such as pick confirmations, bin to bin transactions, inventory counts. Um, and if you happen to be on-prem, SAP's go-to solution is still ITS mobile, um, which is definitely a little bit older technology and it's not as uh, sexy as some of the new stuff out there. Um, but out of the box, ITS mobile, um, there are numerous transactions um, out of, there are a lot of new, um, out of the box transactions that support picking, put away, uh, packing, physical inventory, and so forth. Um, however, in my experience, these are very generic, and most customers that I've worked with in the past um, have ultimately ended up um, developing customer specific UIs to better align with their physical and business requirements within, um, within their warehouse. Um, so, like I mentioned, ITS Mobile is definitely not fancy or pretty. Um, it does not support the HTML5 um, or the latest technology, but it's definitely tried and true um, technology and a solution that is really a dependable workhorse um, within that you can use within the warehouse. So, if you are deploying S4 HANA on cloud, um, SAP is, is suggesting a different approach. Um, so if you're in the cloud, it does not, it, they don't recommend using RF. So it doesn't, they don't recommend using the ITS mobile, um, mainly because you can't touch the ABAP code. So if you need to make any changes or um, if you need to make any changes or want to build additional um, transactions or whatnot, that's actually not possible in the cloud. Um, they also don't recommend using um, Fury apps in the in the cloud, um, mainly because of performance. Um, they don't it, they don't believe that the performance is sufficient for really high speed scanning. Um, 
and then out of the box, they don't really have um, shop floor applications um, that are standard out of the box. So in a cloud scenario, SAP is pushing API. Um, so basically what they plan to do is, or what their direction is, is to open up the SAP EWM backend with, public, with published APIs to allow SAP partners and customers to basically consume all of the EWM data on any device. Um, so this is kind of their future plan and they're still kind of fleshing out the details, but that's their strategy um, if you're doing a cloud, a cloud implementation. So from an EWM, um, so currently today, there's a roughly about 25 EWM Fiori apps um, that are standard out of the box delivered by SAP. The vast majority of these um, EWM Fiori apps are designed for the desktop or tablet. They're, they're not designed to run on your phone or a traditional RF device. Um, the one thing also to note is that um, the EWM Fiori apps are very, very similar to the existing GUI transactions. So for example, if you look at the warehouse monitor in the GUI, it looks very, very similar to the um, warehouse monitor um, in the, the warehouse monitor in the Fiori app. So it's kind of like they just did a pickup, a, a shift and li uh, lift and shift operation. Um, so there's not, there's not really a lot of new uh, functionality or um, capabilities within the standard EWM Fiori apps um, than what you than what you currently have in the existing GUI transactions. However, however, the one thing that SAP did um, start to do with um, the Fiori apps, and so this is one of the Fiori apps that is not available. This functionality is not available in the GUI, and this is Warehouse KPIs. So this is SAP's first attempt to um, build. Uh, warehouse KP KPIs um, in Fiori. Um, so some of the things that, they, that are kind of standard KPIs out of the box are open warehouse tasks by activity areas, um, having the ability to see open warehouse tasks by process category. So you can see the number of open um, warehouse tasks by put away, by picking, by replenishment. You can do it by process types. Um, you can see, also see the overall um, outbound delivery items by goods issue status or overdue outbound items that don't have um, goods issues. And you can do, you can see that by ship to party, by route and so forth. So this is their first attempt at warehouse KPIs. It, there, there's, a, there's some other KPIs that I think are more beneficial, but this was a good start for um, SAP. So then the big question is, is well, what's possible with Fiori? Um, you know, Fiori really provides you a baseline, a foundation to design and develop applications and dashboards that um, can better monitor your warehouse processes, provide you real-time analytics, um, and then, and, or report on actual useful KPIs. Um, to give you a couple of examples, um, in the bottom, in the bottom slide here, Mindset, we developed for a customer, we developed a route status um, application or transaction for a warehouse so they could easily see its outbound workload by route and how, how they're progressing throughout the day. So we've got each of the routes listed here um, and then the total number of, of HUs that are required um, and kind of where they are in the day, you know, what time they have to go out and, you know, are they 80% complete, 66% complete. So it gives you a really um, good visibility of, of what's happening in your, in your picking and packing operations. So it's also possible um, to build um, outbound dashboards that you know, can, um, can show you really useful KPIs. For example, um, picking productivity. So um, what's the number of line items that you're picking per hour by employee? Um, picking accuracy. So what's the percentage of orders picked and packed without error? And really one of the things you can start measuring um, and presenting is picking cycle time. So how long is it taking you to pick each order? Um, this allows you to, um, to establish some KPIs and actually start measuring against them. So for example, um, you can establish tar target pick rates by zone. So I think standard in standard, warehouse, in standard warehouses, if you've got a forward pick zone, you know, your target pick rate is somewhere between 75 and 90 lines per hour. If you're case picking, it's usually about 45 to 50 lines per hour. 
In a high rack area, your usual target rate is about 25 lines per hour. Um, so within um, so within Fiori, we can build applications that are tracking that information um, by zone or areas, also by employee. Um, so you can start monitoring that stuff and really um, presenting and, and really being able to report on KPIs. Um, some other examples um, that we've done for other clients and, and just to kind of get your your imagination um, flowing, we can also you can also build internal wa warehouse dashboards. So um, you can um, in there you can include things like pick bin replenishment statuses. So um, how are you replenishing? How how well are you doing on replenishing your forward bin your forward pick areas? Um, you can include order lead times, rate of return, your total carrying cost of inventory. You can have a kidding monitor or a status. So if you are doing MTO and MTS, you can have a whole kidding dashboard that kind of keeps track and reports on things like that. The one thing, um, you know, what one of the benefits of building some of these dashboards is that you can really start, um, you can, it gives you the ability um, and the information to really start developing and deploying employee, employee incentive programs, you know, so you can set target rates and you can actually report and see how people are faring against um, those target rates. And also, you can also see and compare between um, different warehouses. So you can kind of see across your board within a region or among different regions, how are all of your warehouses performing? So the, the possibility with Fury apps is endless. Before we move on, I think we'd like to do one last poll. So Amy, if you can um, do the last poll for me, that would be wonderful. Um, so the polling question is, what mobile technology are you using today? So if you'll take a few minutes now to answer this question, if it's applicable to you. It looks like most people have answered. I'm going to share the results. So it looks like the uh, overall winner here is SAP Console. So for those of you who are not familiar, SAP Console is the predecessor to ITS Mobile. It's um it's a text-based GUI or text-based application that runs on kind of like green screen. Um, it's definitely not pretty, but it is a true and tried uh, workhorse. Um, and then it looks like, so 35% use, currently using SAP Console. We've got 27% using ITS Mobile. And we've got a couple people using um, Fiori and, or some other uh, third party or some other kind of application. And we've got a few people here that haven't quite, um, haven't quite, are not currently using uh, mobile technology today. Okay, so now that we kind of talked about, um, you know, what's available, migration options, we've discussed a little bit about mobility or gave you a high level introduction to kind of mobility solutions within um, S4, you know, the next question, logical question is, well, how do I decide on a deployment strategy? So when you start thinking about um, a deployment strategy and, and what solutions right for you, some of the key questions or things you need to consider um, when, when you're doing that evaluation is, is one, the number of warehouses um, and your future expansion plans and the capacity and velocity of each warehouse. Because um, if you have numerous large high velocity warehouses, um, you might lean towards decentral EWM because one of the questions you have to ask yourself is can my current um, environment, my current IT landscape, can it support an, um, an embedded EWM across um, globally across multiple warehouses and stuff. Um, another thing you're going to have to that you should consider is your need to scale up or scale out. 
Um, ultimately, you'll need to consider the volume load on the system and whether or not you have third party warehouses that might favor a more of a decentralized approach. Other, include, other considerations include downtime management. So do you need to minimize warehouse downtime in case of maintenance or system availability? So if you've got uh, an environment where you've got a lot of downtime, unexpected downtime, um, maybe a decentralized, a local decentralized system is, 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 is better. Um, it upgrade capability. So you'll have to decide whether or not you need the ability to upgrade one system without impacting the other. So in other words, do you need to upgrade S4 HANA without impacting your EWM system and vice versa? Um, another consideration is warehouse automation. So um, do you need to connect to material flow systems or external P PLCs? And if so, how much and how often? Another consideration is can your existing, I think I mentioned this before, is can your existing IT infrastructure, is your existing IT infrastructure capable of handling embedded EWM? And lastly, you know, what are the TCO and TCI? So what's the total cost of ownership um, for your for your overall for your solution. So how can how can mindset help? Um, mindset can help because we can lead you through um, an, an EWM assessment. And so what is in a what it, what do we typically do in an EWM assessment? And what does that include? Um, the first is we come in and we usually help you know, we, we come in and understand what your current and future business requirements are and what your current landscape um, what your landscape requirements are. We help you understand the key capabilities of each WMS offering. So we dive a little bit deeper into what is stockroom management, what is um, advanced and um, basic EWM, what is decentralized EWM. We, we help you evaluate the functional fit of each of those WMS offerings. And, and identify gaps, both from a um, business, business and landscape requirements perspective. Um, we also help you identify, you know, um, and document your business, benef business benefits, your goals, your KPIs. Um, you know, we help you determine which warehouse offering is, it fits each of your different warehouses and your different situations, and then develop a template approach. Because ultimately, you want to deploy a very similar solution across your enterprise. Um, we can help you define a migration strategy and, and ultimately identify any necessary IT landscapes or adjustments that you that you need to make. We can help define a mobile strategy, regardless whether that's you know using ITS mobile in, in the in the warehouse for those high volume day to day operations like picking and inventory counts and um, bend to bend transactions to building um, a really innovative and creative Fury, app, Fury application that includes outbound dashboards and inbound dashboards um, and KPI metric dashboards. And lastly, you know, we can help define a roadmap um, for you and kind of your next steps as you go through this journey. So I think I've been talking enough. Um, I'd like at this point, I'd like to open it up to some questions. Yep. Hey, Stephanie. Um, so this is Amy and we have a, a number of questions in the Q&A box and then we do have one that came in on chat as well. Great. Um, so um, the top question was, uh, is it confirmed that stockroom management will retain the interface to a third party system? Third party system. Third party systems out, not, not SAP. Um, I don't know that, I do not know the answer to that one. Um, there has not been a lot of information provided about stockroom management. It's basically what they've provided, what SAP has provided thus far is some really high level um, information. So some of that detailed stuff is not available yet. Um. Next question. Just to clarify, did you say that on 1909, decentralized EWM basic requires an additional license by WHS or is decentralized only utilized for advanced EWM? Nope. So, sorry, this is a little, it's a little confusing. So, um, with embedded EWM, um, you have, so, and I think that's available. 
um, in, in 1909, so which regardless of what release. Um, so if you are using embedded EWM, so <clears throat> with embedded, so with within configuration, there's a setting where you can say for this warehouse, I'm using basic EWM. And then for this warehouse, I'm using advanced EWM. So that's kind of how SAP controls, um, whether it's a basic or advanced. Um, you can't turn on the advanced unless you have the additional licensing um, parameters set for you. So in, if you are just utilizing basic EWM, it is included in the standard enterprise license. So if you have a license for S4, it's part of the core and it's available for you to use. If you want to use the advanced features that are included in the advanced EWM, it does require additional licensing. Um, and it's the same additional licensing that's required for decentralized. So advanced, advanced embedded EWM and decentralized EWM both require an additional licensing fee, whereas basic embedded EWM and stockroom management are part of the core and are part of the uh, standard license, enterprise license. Hopefully that answered your question. Good job. Um, I'm going to hop over to the one that came in and check because that one came in fairly early. Um, um, do we have, do we still have any additional work in advanced EDM, EWM in case the HANA system is down? So, okay. So with embedded EWM, it is actually so one thing to, to note is that when you talk about embedded EWM, it is actually part of the core. So it's very it's kind of think about it the way standard WM is today. So if your ECC system is down, standard WM is not available, right? Because it's part of the core. Same thing with embedded EWM, um, it's part of core. So one of the advantages with embedded EWM is, is that it, because it's part of core, all of this transfer of master data and the data duplication and the configuration is no longer required because it's part of the core. The disadvantage to that is that when your S4 system goes down, EWM, regardless of basic or advanced, embedded EWM is also not available because it's part of your core. Um, the only way it can be, a, the only way it, it, it can um, be up and running EWM can be up and running regardless of the status of your S4 system is if EWM is an embedded, or I'm sorry, excuse me, is a decentralized system because it's sitting on a different S4 HANA database and it's a completely different server than your, than your um, ERP S4 system. So you can detach, you can, so you can, um, they, they sit on two different servers. So that so the benefit to a decentralized environment is that you can, when your S4 system goes down, decentralized EWM can still be up and running. So whether you bring your S4 system down due to, um, an, if it's an unexpected outage or a planned outage or an upgrade or whatever, whatever happens with S4, it does not impact, necessarily impact your decentralized EWM system. So that can still be up and running. Great, thank you. Um, next question, EGR is not required, but this does not mean that it cannot be used. Do you know if this is going to be removed in the short term? No, so yes, yeah. so you can, so you can still use EGRs. There is a configuration setting that allows you to say whether to turn on synchronized posting or not. So if you turn on synchronized posting, you don't need to use an EGR. But if you don't turn that configuration setting on, then you can still use EGR. Perfect, thank you. Um, next question, um, and I believe these two go together. So um, correct me in chat if I get this wrong, but in 1909, is EWM OD number and ERP OD number the same? Okay, uh, say that ODR. Um, it's in it's in the Q and A section, but it's it in, in 1909, I believe he um, it was yeah. related to questions. EWM OD number and ERP OD number are the same. Yes, yes, that is what has been announced. Yes, is that 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 will happen? Yes. So um, so basically, what that is for people who 
don't speak Japanese. Um, so in the <laughs> ERP, so the S4 outbound delivery, right? So you have your sales order, your outbound delivery. So you have your outbound delivery number. Um, currently in a non embedded environment, um, when, or no, actually take that back. When you create an outbound delivery in S4, and it gets and it gets transferred or it gets replicated in EWM currently today or in releases prior to 1909 it creates a different outbound delivery number in EWM so you basically have your um, S4 delivery number so let's say it's delivery 1234 in EWM it's delivery number 555 why they did it that way that first place I don't know Supposedly in 1909, they've announced that it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same number. So now in um, S4, if you create an outbound delivery, it's 1234. And then in EWM, it also becomes 1234. Now that is only available, that, that, that um, synchronization of delivery numbers, whether it's outbound or inbound, that's only available in an embedded environment. That will not be available um, in a decentralized EWM system. Thank you. And it looks like we got it right because he responded. Um, last question, and I know we're over time, so thanks for everybody for sticking with us. On the dashboard part, can, can we view past data? Can, are we able to view the past data view or with date range? Um, you have the capability to uh, do both. So you can, um, and it's in your, it's, it's, there's nothing standard, so the standards, nothing is standard, so you can, you can design and develop, you know, custom UIs and custom dashboards, um, and you can set those kind of parameters. So we can look at, you know, we can present data, quote unquote, live data, so things that are happening today, we can present, you know, window, we can present uh, reports and, and slices of data based on um, date ranges, so we can provide, you know, what does the last month look like? What does the last three months look like? What does the last six months look like? That's, and that's typically very common, especially from a finance perspective. We've, we've done a lot of financial reporting and dashboards, and they want to be able to see, you know, things on a rolling basis. So they want to see things that happen in a month versus three months versus year. And then also you would have that capability of saying, okay, I'm going to take warehouse one and warehouse two, and I want to compare them, how they've been doing and performing against each or performing um, in the last month. And you can look at that. You can, um, you know, you can look at it at a three month window. You can do it at a two month. You can look, take warehouses and say, okay, I want to compare my, uh, my APEC warehouses to my EMEA warehouses. How are they performing against each other? You know, and you can start to see trends and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So really with Fiori, anything is possible. Cool. Good. I think that's the end of our question, Stephanie. Great, thank you guys. Thank you everybody for taking the time out today to join us for our webinar. I hope it was um, informational to you. Um, and again, if you have any further questions or, um, or would like a copy of the presentation, you know, please feel free to reach out to myself or to Amy or anybody at Mindset and we, um, we would be more than happy to answer questions. Yep, okay. yep and thanks again. Um, Again, if you do, as Stephanie said, if you do have any additional questions, um, please do reach out. Also, if you're interested in scheduling some time to talk one-on-one -on -one with Stephanie regarding projects that you have in mind or um, to talk with anybody else, any of our other specialists on the Mindset team. Thanks again for joining us. Bye.